How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. It sounds like it's going to be a really interesting discussion. <laughs> no problem, no problem at all. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Are you calling from London today? Um, I'm actually right this second. I'm actually in Liverpool. Uh, oh. There's a there's um, uh, a development I'm working on that's up in Liverpool. So I'm kind of I'm up and down a bit. All right, brilliant. Um, well, if you're happy to get started, um, I'll uh, sort of fire away some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, I'm really interested in hearing more about your story. Uh, could you talk me through yeah. how, your journey from how you came from growing up in a tower block yourself to actually becoming a property developer? Oh, um, I think for me, property was something that I was always kind of interested in. And can you hear me okay? I just want to double check that. Uh, I'm coming through yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So I, I was always interested in property. I just never really kind of understood how it worked or how to sort of get into it. And and I always assumed that property was for rich people. So you know, my parents never owned their own homes. Uh, we've lived in blocks. So so the way we grew up, there wasn't a lot of sort of home ownership and and sort of I guess you know understanding how sort of asset owning assets or you know generating wealth really worked and I think because of that it drove me to to learn more about it and and to I guess take take it to the next level to level up really yeah so now that you're in this position um, I wondered what steps do you take at the property shack to ensure that your properties are safe to live in to ensure that they're what? Uh, that they're safe to live in. Oh, safe to live in. Oh, I mean, I, I think the difference for me is because I didn't, I guess I wasn't, I didn't grow up as a developer. I didn't, um, you know, I, I don't come from a generation of, 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 of being a property developer. So my perspective is very, very different. I think because I grew up the way I grew up, my, my approach is very holistic. To, to stuff you know I look at when I look at housing I look at it from a perspective well would I live like that or you know would I I think it's definitely more of a human connection to my to my approach to anything I do but more so property because I'd say we grew up very very working class you know very working class so you know I'm, I'm one of six children you know we grew up in very sort of tight conditions so I've always got a, a very humane and holistic approach to everything so my company the way we work is everything we we focus on is 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 sustainable to to begin with and um we always make sure that it's everything's built as, as safely as possible because it's it, it's it's a very competitive market and sometimes margins can be very tight so i i see where people try to save costings and they, they maybe scrimp on materials and you get it with a lot of the volume house builders, to, to, to be fair. Because um, I, I feel with them, it's very much, it's all about profit. It's, it's all about making money. And I think there is a way to, to create a profitable uh, company that, that still focuses on quality and, and giving people, uh, you know, a, a decent home to live in. Yeah, and of course, the reason that we're talking today is because this year marks five years since the Grenfell Tower fire. Uh, yes. and I wonder, do you believe that the tragedy has left as much of an impact on the construction industry and on policy as it should? As it should have. I, I, if I be honest, I think more needs to be done. I think more could have been done. Um, it's a hard one because I think it impacted it, it was, it impacted everybody massively. And, you know, it was, it was, it was heart wrenching, but I, but I just based on the statistics, I should say, cause I can't, you know, really tell somebody how they feel, but based on the statistics in terms of what, how long it's been and what's been done, I think it's, I think there's, I don't agree with what's, you know, the changes. I don't think there's been enough. 
I don't think the policies or the construction industry, maybe the industry, I think there's definitely, there's definitely been a shift on sort of the health and safety side and definitely on the fire side, uh, post Grenfell. But, but I just feel like in terms of what's been done in regards to pre-existing buildings, I, I don't think there's been enough now. And what do you think are the reasons that sort of are holding people back? Um, so it's a huge tragedy. You'd think people would be scrambling to to make things right. What, why do you think that, that hasn't happened? Uh, I can only assume, I think generally when things don't happen, it often comes down to, to sheer neglect or money. You know, there are some people that just, I just think, generally don't care enough. Um, and the only real way to make some people care in this world is really for, for them to suffer loss themselves. So there's a, there's a personal human connection in relation to the loss or for them to lose money um, or pe be penalized in, you know, in some held accountable in some form of way. I think the lack of accountability um, is, is a problem. I think that's, because yeah, I just feel like if there was if there was more accountability, then then more would more would have been done, and there's just there's just not been enough. And how do we hold people accountable? Would you say that falls upon the government, or is that within the industry? I think it it it'd be good if it was both, because one of the things I always thought was well, why would certain materials be allowed to be sold if they if they they're not they're not safe you know why would why would we have flammable cladding on the market if it's flammable that doesn't make sense so there's a lot of things that don't make sense and and I guess there's no I don't know if there's one I don't know if it's black and white if you say well because that that's flammable that shouldn't be sold but I think as as on the on the construction side these things need to be reviewed uh, you know, I, I, I think the market has, I've, I, one of the things I will say about the construction industry, I'd say it's very, very dated. It's extremely dated. And I think it's very, it's very old school. It's very traditional because there's so much new sort of modern methods of construction and modern materials that we could use. I just think it's, it's a very, it's dated probably because the people who are I guess the giants within the industry aren't necessarily motivated to change. Even though change is inevitable and affects us all, I feel that, you know, the powers that be or, you know, the larger, the larger corps in the industry don't necessarily have to change. So I feel like the only way to sort of make them change would be to hold them accountable. So there'd be, have to be some sort of reprimand or some sort of, some form of accountability. And often people with money, they tend to scurve accountability or they, they scurve, you know, they can get out of potential trouble or potential issues. But I think that needs to be, because, because our job is so important, we, we, we home, we house people. And if people's lives are potentially in danger, then, then there should be some risk of, 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 you know, potentially, you know, going to jail or being in prison because you have it with, I mean, if you, don't pay your taxes, then you could potentially go to jail. But then if, you, if you're if you building something knowingly that, or, or knowingly unknowingly, but if you're made to know that it's unsafe, you should be held accountable for that, 100%. You know, it's, it's no different to, it's no different to like dangerous driving. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So I was thinking like, we don't build houses out of paper mache because we know that that isn't safe. So exactly. why do we still use materials that we don't know are safe? I, yeah. it, that, that side of it blows my mind. And I, and, I, and I think in terms of maybe the way that, you know, you got your, the way that the health, health and safety part's done, building control and all of those elements of the development, I think there, there just needs to come a point where there's maybe a review every so often. I don't know, hypothetically say it was every few years, there was a review where some things are just no longer viable. They shouldn't be on the market. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't, because essentially what we're saying, and in this day and age where we have access to so much information and, and research, we, we know, we understand how things work. We know how to 
potentially make things as fire um, resistant as possible, you still you shouldn't be able to buy things that aren't in line with that. You shouldn't be able to purchase it, or you shouldn't be able to sell it. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be for sale because you're just giving people the option to buy it. Because they can say, well, legally, I can I can buy it and I can use it, and God forbid something bad happens, then then you know I haven't broken any laws. I haven't done anything wrong. If it's just not available, then then it, 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 to me, it has no business being in the market. And uh, looking more broadly as well, uh, yeah. I did a bit of research on the property shack. I saw you're a very sort of socially conscious company. Yes. Uh, and I'm keen to hear more about your community outreach work. So tackling issues such as unemployment, youth crime, homelessness. Could you tell me a bit more about those programs? Yeah, so for me, um, I'd always, my background, maybe like sort of 10 years ago, probably a bit longer than that, I was... I'd, I'd done, a, um, I was a residential care worker because I'd done work with sort of young people and it was something that was quite dear to me. I, I kind of did it as a sideline because I'd always been sort of running my own businesses, but it was something that I always felt that we potentially could run concurrently. You know, if you're, if you do have a business or you do, you do, I don't know, if you, you know, you have your own thing you can always still give back. And even if it's to one person or one young person, it still has an impact. And I, I've always sort of been big on community because I think when I was growing up, there was a lot more community. And so I, I kind of, sometimes it's easy to look at things and be like, oh, things should be like this or the government should do this and this should happen. So my thing is, well, you need to be the change that you want. So if you want to have more stuff going on in the community, you should maybe do it. If you think people should get on better, maybe you should you, you should do what you can within your power to make that happen. I think sometimes we're turned off because we don't see it externally. So we're like, well, I, more should happen, more should be done for homeless, but because the government's not doing anything, then that's that. So I think given an opportunity to create my own company and, and do stuff, um, I was like, well, how could I assist? How could I potentially um, make change for good? So with the Property Shack, we started focusing, a few years ago, we started focusing more on offsite construction, which is where you develop sort of elements of a building or sort of maybe whole buildings in parts or elements of a building is pre-assembled in another location and then it's moved to site and what that means is is that we could essentially create jobs you know we if say there's a factory or people i could basically create jobs for people and it doesn't necessarily mean they need to be highly skilled so it could be you know they could have quite sort of not necessarily have any skills and we could train them so for if i've got this company it means i have the opportunities my company i could i could hire somebody that's maybe been homeless or I could hire someone that's been to prison or been imprisoned. And, and I think one of my, um, I guess one of my abilities is to reach out to people that are very similar to me, that could relate to me. So maybe young black males that live in, in the estates or in the tower blocks that don't necessarily see opportunities in construction or in offsite construction and development and say to them, look, I can create opportunities and, and you know, I can, there's not necessarily gonna have the stigma you may fear, you may have in other, you know, in other organizations. So I, I said, I, considering I have this opportunity, I need to use it. And so we've been working on putting together training for young people at risk, ex-offenders, um, homeless people where they can learn about offsite construction and we could ultimately give them opportunities, uh, you know, paid opportunities, you know, paid work, basically. So what I've been sort of working on at the moment is we've registered, just getting everything sort of registered, getting putting the training together, we're registered with the construction industry training board. Um, we've got support from from other organisations. We've got things lined up with the GLA, and so it's just putting that together. And we're now in a position where we've got a couple of developments that are 
sort of going through legals and getting ready to to be prepared. So I'm now sort of pulling together site visits and getting people trained up on site and to create opportunities, employment opportunities and training opportunities. And and again, I, I think it, I just think as an entrepreneur, we have the opportunity to create real change. Sometimes the government or local authorities, they're quite big and they're sort of an amalgamation of lots of different people. So they don't always move as fast as we would like them to move. So I feel like as opportunity, as, as creators, as entrepreneurs, as people, if we kind of just focus and maybe come together, we can make real change. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here at The Property Share. Mm-hmm.